Now I've got a, uh, another interesting, uh, well hopefully interesting, antenna for us to take a look at that I uh, picked up off eBay. The guy uh, has got a few of these, he's selling them pretty cheap, I think they're about £7. Um, he told me that this came out of some uh, student uh, accommodation. It's a ceiling mount uh, Wi-Fi antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. It's got uh, 5 dB of gain. Um, haven't been able to find out a lot of information about this. Uh, it seems to be a pretty generic uh, antenna. Um, a local company who we've looked at a couple of their antennas previously, uh, Solwise, sells something uh, similar, but it doesn't quite look like this. It's uh, a little bit flatter in this area here. Now, Solwise don't make any antennas. They uh, buy them in bulk and uh, sell them to companies for networking offices uh, and things like that. Um, but uh, they do have testing facilities, so they do generate reports for their antennas. But uh, this one is a bit of an unknown. It's just completely uh, unbranded, so I don't know what's going to be underneath the lid here. But uh, let's take it over to the uh, test bench and have a look at its uh, waveform over on the network analyzer, see how well it works at uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And as I'm not sure about this, I mean, maybe it's just a simple dipole on the inside here, and we've got this uh, ground plane of aluminium here just to reflect uh, everything downwards, you know, because uh, as I say, this is a ceiling mount, and work it would work similar to uh, a lampshade around the lamp. It'll just take some of the wasted light that's uh, lighting up the ceiling and then sending it back down to light up the room. So let's have a look at the waveform then and uh, should be interesting and then we'll take it apart and see what's on the inside. So the setup is uh, pretty standard, you've seen me do this many times before. We'll have to do a video in the future I think explaining this in more detail for some of the newer subscribers on this channel. But uh, let's take a look at the output on the network analyzer. Now this waveform that we've got on the network analyzer is pretty new, unique. It did throw me a little bit uh, when I first uh, hooked this up and saw the output on the screen. Normally, uh, if I want to do a quick uh, test, I will scan the 2.4 gigahertz antenna from uh, 2 gigahertz up to uh, 3 gigahertz. But this one, I'm scanning from uh, 1 gigahertz all the way over here to 3 gigahertz here because this piece was uh, over here hanging off the uh, edge of the screen and I was just getting this flat line here and then this big spike so scanning from uh, 1 gigahertz to 3 we now see the full picture I've uh, got the cursor on 2.45 gigahertz which is uh, the middle of the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum range but just look how wide this frequency of operation is. I've also had to uh, pause the uh, waveform here because it was jumping around a little bit. It's quite a uh, jumpy antenna. I mean some of the uh, directional antennas that uh, I test can be a little bit uh, fidgety but uh, this one really jumped around quite a lot so I have to uh, have it on hold here or every time I move my hand it will uh, be up and down but uh, let's have a look how wide this is. Let's go all the way over here. And here at uh, 1.9 gigahertz, a really wide uh, frequency of operation there. Even over here, uh, 1.7 gigahertz, it will probably work at around uh, 1800, 1900, uh, kind of a 4G signal there if you wanted to use this uh, in that uh, frequency band. But uh, a really wide. Um, frequency of operation so I'm not sure what we're going to find when we take a look at this antenna I was thinking it was going to be something like a uh, dipole with just a reflector just to uh, you know uh, force some of the uh, energy from the antenna downwards a little bit like a uh, down lighter around the light bulb but uh, with it being this wide it uh, certainly is not going to be a simple dipole antenna under here so hopefully there's uh, something interesting inside here. I definitely now looking at that waveform, don't think it's uh, a simple dipole or a uh, monopole with this back reflector here. Definitely something going off on the inside of this. So hopefully it should be interesting. Now, first impressions, uh, 
I was not expecting this. I mean, we've got some quite wide aluminium tube in here. We'll take some measurements in a moment. Be interesting, I don't think that this part of the element is uh, connected in any way to uh, the ground plane. It looks to be uh, completely separate. The uh, measurements don't look, you know, the length of these don't look like something for uh, 2.4. And how wide the diameter is on these tubes. I mean, if you've uh, watched any of my videos uh, in the past, you'll see that's one way of uh, increasing the broadband capability of an antenna to use thick, uh, thicker wire. It's one way of uh, producing a multi-band antenna. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what we've got here. Now I'm trying to disassemble this so we can uh, get some more accurate measurements to get a better understanding of this. But uh, this is the uh, end connector here. And by the way, it comes with a uh, very nice cable uh, end connector to SMA co connector. I mean, for seven pounds, the cable alone is probably uh, worth that. But uh, this end type uh, screw connector here has been machined to fit this aluminium plate. So everything uh, is put together. It's built um, from uh, you know the bottom up. The reflector goes on first. And that's held down by this uh, locking nut here and then this goes on top so the only way for me to get this apart is to try and remove the main driven element from uh, the pin and i'm not sure how it's uh, connected down in there i don't think it's soldered it's probably uh, forced in there and it's just being held together with uh, friction between the two metal surfaces but uh, very nicely well made really going to the trouble of having that screw machined as well but uh, yeah I'm going to try and get this off so we can get some better measurements now I've managed to get uh, this part off and I just wanted to show you uh, we've got a dielectric separator here and this pin here and that goes down into there and connects to the uh, pin down in the uh, end type connector which uh, is there and there. So it just fits down through there. This dielectric fits into here, holds that in place, and it's connected up with the pin. So there's no solder in there. That's a, that's a really nice way of connecting this. Now, I want to uh, remove uh, these two pieces of tube in here. I've got some epoxy down in here because uh, there's definitely a size difference. If I measure the depth, of the uh, smaller tube down here and then uh, offer this up down into the uh, wider tube you can see there's a difference with depth there so the smaller tube has got its own base it's not as long now it took me uh, quite some time to dismantle this and unfortunately it was a bit of a uh, destructive dismantle but at least we've got some measurements we can work with now uh, the wider tube in here, the outside tube in, is 34 millimeters in diameter. It is exactly 50 millimeters uh, long. The uh, smaller piece of tube in is 22 millimeters in diameter, and it's exactly 75 millimeters long. Now we've also got this bit here. Now this holds everything together, and uh, this measures 12.8. Uh, millimeters deep from here to its base and this uh, second uh, this first platform here sorry this from here to here is 7.6 millimeters deep now i have got some copper tubing on the way and i am going to recreate uh, well try and recreate this in a future video i also want to know if i can make it a little bit smaller with the diameters of the tubing uh, whether I could make um, recreate this antenna with 22 millimeters being the uh, outer diameter and possibly uh, 12 millimeters being the uh, smaller inner diameter, so we can uh, you know shrink the uh, footprint of this down a little bit. I don't know if that will work. Not sure how much uh, the uh, diameter of these play into the center frequency of uh, the antenna. I mean uh, normally when you make things uh, with a much larger diameter or use thicker wire you can increase uh, the uh, broadband 
of the uh, antenna itself but they also do play a bit of a part in the uh, centre frequency I've, as we've seen when we've taken uh, dual band uh, dipole antennas to pieces for instance so I want to try and create this because I have got uh, a nice idea, a nice application that we can use this in and see if uh, it uh, will improve um, the already uh, available antenna that's out there I think we could uh, kind of turn this into a bit of a hybrid because at the end of the day when you're just using the element like this without its ground plane this is an omnidirectional antenna and uh, you know it's 5 dB uh, uh, omnidirectional antenna and with it being such a wide um, frequency of response that it works over as well uh, we could use that uh, to our advantage and it could be a nice little niche antenna this one it's uh, really really interesting but I'm still not sure which part of the family this belongs to I'm still thinking that maybe uh, it's based on a uh, backfire design but if you uh, have seen this and you know exactly what it is then uh, please let us know in the comments but uh, very very interesting and uh, its frequency of operation really is wide so hopefully the uh, video wasn't uh, too long and uh, you found it interesting if you did please uh, give it a uh, thumbs up um, yeah you never know what you're going to find under the hat I mean uh, yeah quite literally looks like a uh, sombrero but uh, you never know what you're going to find until you take one of these apart it's not what I was expecting so I hope you found it as interesting as uh, I did and uh, yeah if you know what family this belongs to please let us know in the comments and uh, you know if you want to uh, help support this channel helps me to buy uh, things like this that we can uh, take a look at then please consider popping over to patreon and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one